Hello, everybody. Welcome to this Tuesday night chameleon chat. It's wonderful to have every. Oh, what the heck is going on here? Why am I hearing myself? <laughs> okay. Woo. Uh, once again, give me a second while I. Uh, I mute this. There we go. Hey, Carson. All right. Now now I think we're ready to go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at everybody. Nate, Ty, Marsha, Ann, Liza. Hello, Sherbert. Hidden in plain sight chameleons. I've not seen that name before. Welcome. Welcome. We're always glad to have other people in the community here. Woo. 3M, oh, that's, I'm a big fan. Well, welcome to this uh, chat. Hello, Chris. Uh, there you are on TV, not my computer. Okay. <laughs> and Mikey Ben is here. Oh, everybody, I am so glad to be back. Uh, as you know, that I was away for a week and I was doing some wonderful things. I'm very, uh, I, I, I got a lot done and it'll be a little while before I can present to you what I'm working on because it's kind of a huge project, but I'm very excited. And so uh, just just hang tight with me. Uh, we're we're going to be having a whole heck of a lot of fun uh, going forward. There is, I, I just love it that, that, that I, I've been doing this for, well, this is my ninth year of doing this and I, there's still so much more to do and get excited for. Hey, Gecko Galaxy. Good to see you here. Oh, Bethany. Hello. And Carlos, Misfit Noodle. Oh my goodness. we got all sorts of Great people. Hello, everybody. Okay. How was Yvette's birthday? <clears throat> uh, so for those who don't know, uh, this last week, uh, actually yesterday, was officially Yvette's birthday. Yvette is my wife. She is the force behind Misty Mountain Fans, and I took some time off to focus on her. And we did all sorts of fun stuff. We went to a uh, nursery. She loves going to a nursery. <laughs> And uh, we went out for uh, little treats here and there in a special coffee place. And we uh, we picked up a mulberry tree. We both love having a mulberry tree. And so uh, very excited about that. And hey, two turtle Tom. So uh, yeah, Yvette, Feliz Cumpleanos. Happy birthday. <laughs> Oh, she, I, I have invited her to come on and say hello to everybody. And so we'll see if she uh, joins here. Hey, Richard, good to see you here. And uh, by the way, everybody, remember last time I was talking about the uh, the great coffee from Tarantula Collective? It's up again. It's up. They, uh, they got the new roast in and I am getting my batch in. And so it, as soon as it gets in, I got the gift box. So as soon as it gets in, we're going to uh, open it here and, uh, you know, whether it's this Saturday or next Saturday, we'll see. But uh, if, for those of you who are uh, wanting to go to his site and try out that coffee that, that I have on my Saturdays, it's live now. They, they restock. So tarantulacollective.com. And uh, we were just speaking on the phone. Now you're on the Internet. You know what? I'm all over the place, Richard. That's just the way it is. <laughs> you know what? Uh, us chameleon, us uh, Kaluminati, we're all over the place. So, oh man, let's see. Um, mulberries here in Connecticut are the bane of all owners of white cars. Yeah. And you know what? The ones I got, I don't know if mine is fruiting or not. So uh, we could, <laughs> I could be having a mess here. I, I don't know the uh, white, the, uh, the Alba. Do they come in fruiting and non-fruiting varieties? I'm not sure. I know I tried to get a non-fruiting before, but uh, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> First of for friends, we got all sorts of stuff going on. Oh, we have to check the Brevacorn edge, right? All right. We got to do this every live session because uh, yeah, I know it's really boring right now, uh, but you know what? All of a sudden they will, it's going to explode. I mean, if everybody <laughs> just going to explode. So uh, we're going to be looking at these boring white things until all of a sudden they're not boring and white anymore. But hey, if you've ever bred chameleons, this is what it's like. 
you uh, sit around and you watch these things just sit there. And then all of a sudden, uh, chaos breaks loose because then you've got all these little scurrying chameleons all over the place you got to take care of. So, all right. Hey, Nick and Nandu Nantella. Hello. So, uh, everybody, the uh, the vlogs are back. And so I am once again doing a uh, daily vlog every morning at 5 a.m. Pacific. And every vlog is a premiere. And so we're live in the chat for the first showing. And the reason why I do it is because it is so very cool starting off the day with, uh, with a little bit of with the chameleon friends. Uh, we have such a nice a group that gets together, literally gets together at 5 a.m. Pacific on YouTube and watches the vlog together. And we are in the chat and we talk around and sometimes we talk about what's in the vlog and sometimes we talk about other things. And so it's just a, such a nice way to start the day. So I invite you, uh, for all those of you who are vlog um, um, uh, fans, uh, I'm going to be doing the vlog on weekdays. And so uh, yeah, Yvette and I had a lot of talk as to what life should look like going forward to make sure we <laughs> we uh, we are able to maintain a relationship and such. And we decided, yeah, it's a good idea. We'll have uh, we'll just do the vlog on weekend our, our weekdays. So that is uh, what we're going to be doing. And uh, tomorrow is already loaded up. And it is the DIY Chameleon Guys. So James is, uh, is back and we're going to talk about drainage. All about how to put drainage in the cage. And we do a lot of talking about how to get a Reptibreeze cage and actually put drainage on a Reptibreeze cage. So I uh, uh, joined. That's going to be tomorrow at 5 a.m. Pacific. And of course, if you're there for the first showing, we're going to be live in the chat. We're meaning me and whoever else shows up. A lot of... Uh, and a lot of you do all the way. Uh, anyway. Oh, hey, everybody's got to say hello to Jenny. Hello, Jenny. It's 1 a.m. Oh, my goodness. Usually, usually we don't see Jenny on these uh, Tuesday nights because it's 1 a.m. there for her. She's in Germany. And so whenever we see our friends in Europe on the Tuesday night show, it's because they have the night shift. <laughs> which is which is pretty cool. But uh, Jenny, thank you very much. It's great having you drop by and say hello. Uh, see, Michael told me if you don't pollinate the female mulberry tree, no berries. Male trees do not give fruit. Urban myth. I don't know. He had the nurse. <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll have to figure it out. Uh, all right, everybody say hello to Amanda. Hello, Amanda. How do you have it? Hey, Ashley. Hello. So, all right. Going forward, what are we doing? What are we talking about? Well, I, in the Chameleon Academy, by the way, if anybody has any questions, put them in the comments and we'll talk about them. I'm getting excited about being back here. And, uh, well, there we go. And then I will talk about what I am up to. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Actually, usually it's always 2 a.m., but days of like savings doesn't start until Sunday. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, oh, okay. Camdy Chameleons, open house in my classroom. Well, thank you for dropping by. Very good to see you. And uh, it's okay, Nando. Don't worry. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get get to this question because everybody we have to um I have to take care of the people who are. Uh, just here for a little while and are going. Uh, <laughs> my baby has a dark spot on him after his first shading by me, shedding. No pain or other just after the second shedding, the mark is smaller. I don't think it's a burn. Let me know any cream that I can use. Well, if it's getting smaller with the sheddings, then it's it's healing on its own. It, I mean, we're talking, when you say shading, do you mean shedding? Uh, you know, we get all sorts of fun autocorrects. So if it's getting smaller, then it's healing on its own. You don't have to do anything. Uh, as for which cream to use, if you're going to be using something, you'd have to figure out what it was first because you treating treating it incorrectly could make it worse. So at this point, the question is, do you need to treat it? And if it's just 
hanging tight and letting a couple of shed more sheds go by and it disappears, that's the way to do it. So that's what I would suggest unless you have some reason to believe that it's getting worse or affecting your chameleon. It's too, no, Howard, it is not. It is not. Go back to sleep. Nothing's going on here. Nothing's going on. Oh, hey, here we got the expert. Two Turtle Tom, white mulberry, typically is dioecious. Well, the flute fruit is delicious. Okay. Meaning there are male trees and female trees, but some trees do produce both male and female flowers. All right. Oh, hey, There's come on in. Say hi. There's. Here, we can move this over. <laughs> It'll be just a second. You guys, Yvette's here. Hi. I'll just go by the face because I know that we're, it'll move. We're talking. About, yeah, we're talking about mulberry trees. Oh, I'm so I love mulberry trees. <laughs> so this is for everybody who's uh, who's new here. This is Yvette. This is my wife, and uh, she is always in the uh, supportive. And like when I start. My voice gets raspy on all of a sudden a, a, a cup of water will show up. And so she's wonderful. <laughs> and uh, she's uh, you're now going to be working with pants. Yes, I am. Oh, she's she's going to start her evening chores with her pants. She raises your plate is fantastic. It's a satanic leaf tailed gecko. And uh, she's got to take care of all of her little babies. That's right. Oh, Silly. you got to show the sh a shirt. Oh, you don't know how. <laughs> I have gotten some yogurt on it. Hey. <laughs> That's right. She's showing showing the colors. Hey, we don't talk about these things here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, let's see. Curiosity oddities. I had the pleasure of watching a nematode being removed from under the skin of my wild caught chameleon. Subcutaneous nematodes are always a lot of fun. <laughs> That's always so for, uh, for people who are wondering what the heck he's talking about. Nematodes, the parasitic nematodes sometimes travel in the body. Either they mean to, or else they get lost. And a lot, and a lot of times they end up under the skin, right under the skin. And, uh, you know, Sometimes you you got just got to slit the skin and pull the worm out. You got to do that carefully because if the worm breaks, then you've got necrotic tissue under the skin, and that's not good. So uh, I'm glad you. Uh, uh, I hope we hope you went to the vet, uh, Pablo FYA. Good evening from Spain. Hello, Pablo. Oh my goodness, what are you? Isn't it 1 a.m. there, Pablo? What are you doing awake? But we're very glad that you're here. I'm I'm honored that you are here. Because we have uh, Jenny, who uh, is from Germany, and it's 1 a.m. there. Hey, Chris. Any name suggestions for a new piebald chameleon I picked up this? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> All right, anybody? You, everybody give, uh, give Chris suggestions. What should he name his new piebald chameleon? And, oh, Nando, you're from Holland? Oh, my goodness. It's it's about 1 a.m. there too. Why why are you here? I'm so glad that you're here. Jenny, you've got so many other wonderful European people. I'm so glad. We've got Holland, Germany, and Spain. And Argentina. Hey, this is awesome. Just got from the airport. <laughs> Pablo's from the airport. That's perfect. Um, oh, up, oh, up, oh, here we got good stuff. Jenny got her hands on a male carpet chameleon. Ooh, this oh this would be so awesome jenny you have to keep us informed as to how it's going and uh yeah it would be great to hear about you breeding carpet chameleons mine is ah she should be laying eggs i expect her to lay eggs but she's not laying eggs uh. <sighs> where's vixen uh vixen uh is my little shiba inu and she is like the wind. She comes and goes whenever she feels like it. And she doesn't like to get within arm's reach because she knows I catch her. And she's a Shiba Inu. It's kind of like a dog, a cat in a, a dog's body. And so she didn't, she didn't like to be picked up. So, uh, we love her. Are you talking about uh, Yvette or Vixen? Well, probably Yvette because Yvette just came in. 
Did you know there are wild chameleons in Spain? Oh, yes, Pablo, I did know that there were wild chameleons in Spain. In fact, I was uh, uh, looking at next time we go to Europe, we went to Italy, and I wanted to drop by Spain because that would be awesome. Did your mulberry tree have a cultivar name on it? No, I got it from a friend. And I just grabbed, uh, I got it from a friend who was uh, having to get out of chameleons. And so I got what I got. It's a beautiful tree. I'm loving it. Oh, uh, Howard shared a frog with me. I don't know what kind of frog that is, but boy, I love it. It's awesome. Mr. Noodle saying, embarking on my first journey with a panther here soon. Finally got my humidity perfect before the little one arrives. Thanks to a comment you made in a video or stream about window insulate. Oh, I remember that. Hey, excellent. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it when these little comments end up with a chameleon getting a, getting a really good situation. So, uh, whew. let's see. Okay. Bill, how often do veiled chameleons shed? Mine's been doing it a minimum once a week. Does that mean he's growing or just getting new skin? He's big and healthy. Greg, that means he's growing. And veiled chameleons will shed. Uh, the frequency just uh, depends 100% on how fast they grow. And so if you're feeding your little guy uh, often, he's going to grow a lot and he's going to grow out of his skin a lot. And so he's going to do a lot of shedding. Uh, obviously, when they start slowing down, they stop shedding as much. So really, there isn't a, a set number of sheds that they should be doing to be considered healthy. It's just how fast are they growing? And if he's shedding once a week, wow, <laughs> he's he's growing. But that's what veiled chameleons do. Uh, I've I've kept veiled chameleons and I've had them grow very slowly, but that's because I would keep them outdoors. And so uh, th this is a little something that I'm doing where I keep chameleons outdoors and I see what the difference is. And uh, you know they grow slower outdoors. And so there's there's the question. Uh, do is it really healthy for them to grow at a breakneck speed? I don't know. These are these are things that we need to ask ask ourselves. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it doesn't matter. But you no, know, let's ask ourselves the question. Had a knock on the door from a Dutch tulip salesman. Wow. I want those kind of knocks on the door. <laughs> Oh, young Zerk, I have been great. I haven't seen you for a while, but I'm glad to have you back. And James has joined us. All right. We're expecting some new friends in the morning. Picked up 1.2 of Lateralis and may or may not have made an impulse buy. 1.1 of Kaluma Butgeri. Oh, my goodness, Nick. Those guys are so, so cute. Let's see. Bill, how long is it recommended to keep chameleons together for copulation? Uh, I would say as long as they get along. And at least with copulation, the female will start to say, I've had enough. And that's when you separate them. Uh, I, I wouldn't leave them in for more than a couple of days uh, because you, you want to make sure you didn't miss the initial protest. Um, uh, you got to be really, really careful. Uh, especially with chameleons, uh, species that don't, um, that that aren't as expressive as, say, panther chameleon, such. Quick question about fogging: What's your opinion on all night fogging? Sure. Uh, you know, we fog to keep the humidity high, and uh, I I do all night fogging. I've done morning fogging. I've done all night fogging, and uh, the longer you fog, the more the more high humidity. Uh, so I I don't know the context of this question. Um, can it, let me know? Let me know what what's the context of this question? Is somebody out there saying that that is dangerous, or that there's a problem, or were you just wondering? Um, the answer is. I, I've done all night fogging, no problem. Uh, and so uh, let me know if there's more to that question or there, there's more of a story. Uh, go ahead and let me know because, it, it, you know, it's 
good for me to know what's going on out there. Um, our egg has started to sweat, probably about 18 more hours. Our, hey, congratulations. Getting a little, uh, little baby panther there. So, uh, let's see. I'm so nervous about picking him up. This is the carpet chameleon. It says captive bred, but my gut says wild caught. We'll see after the first fecal, I guess. Yeah, if it's, uh, well, in the United States, if it's an adult, we're pretty sure it's wild caught. So, um, yeah. Well, good luck. Good luck. So, uh, we need to have James Cross do another co host with you, Bill. Uh, I love to have James on, but, uh, no, he's he's always building stuff. I'm making a video on roach keeping this week for a dart frog group, but I'll post it on Instagram. Okay, excellent. Going over the details for raising them. Yeah, yeah. What kind of roaches are you talking about for a dart frog group? What kind of roaches are they looking at doing? Are those like the yeah. <laughs> you got little roaches going on? Well, Bill, what is your ideal feeding schedule for Triosaurus jacksonii? Uh, as a baby, feed them as much as they will eat and just stuff them full of as much food as possible. And when they start to get older, uh, I do every other day, three to five uh, feeder insects every other day. I've, I have seen Jackson's chameleons that are on the chunky side of the unhealthy side. But generally speaking, Jackson's chameleons usually don't have the obesity problems as veils and panthers. Um, they, they do get obese, but uh, it's a lot. They're not as prone to it. So, I mean, I've had my Jacksons, uh, they won't just sit there and chow down like a veiled chameleon will eat anything that moves just because it moves. Jackson's chameleons say, okay, I'm full. So uh, we have a little bit more of a leeway on Jackson's chameleons, but that's my three to five uh, when they're an adult, three to five feeder insects every other uh, day is what I do. Da -da -da. Oops. Dubia babies as feeders, lobsters and hissers. Dubia babies as feeders? Is this like for like tribulus? Interesting. Sounds great. I didn't uh, didn't think of dart frog keepers as uh, as dubia raisers, but hey, it sounds good to me. And yeah, Surf Panther, what is your what's your Instagram? We want to see it. If you uh, if you tag me, I'll uh, I'll put it up on my story so everybody knows where it is. Oh. Hey, Miguel and Eric. Very good to have you here. So, all right. Well, as you have been seeing, if uh, somebody went to my, um, my vlog this morning and you saw the vlog today, uh, I was doing a, oh, Eric, thank you very much. Super sticker, yay. Um, everybody, I uh, for the super stickers that you all gave me, uh, I made sure that I uh, spoiled Yvette. And she can tell you, I, I went to a, a special ice cream place. And we had incredibly good ice cream. And so uh, thank you, Eric, very much. Thank you. And Dane's got uh, Dubia Colony thriving. Excellent. Wait a minute. Matthew from Spain. We got another person from Spain. Excellent. I'm I'm loving this. <laughs> we have a lot of European representation. Um, okay. So as you'll see on my uh, vlog this morning, uh, I was doing a cage evaluation and... Uh, I, I started talking about this forest edge five plus five. 
And uh, those of you who have been around, you know that I've since 2020, I've talked about this thing called the Forest Edge 4 plus 4. And really, uh, really what it was is it's a checklist. It's nothing, it's nothing magical. Uh, it's just a checklist of things to check off with your chameleon cage and say, okay, uh, am I checking all of these things there? There's five gradients, the forest edge concept, five gradients, five uh, branches. And before, when I first presented this, it was four gradients and four branches. Uh, but um, after uh, after a while, I'm realizing, no, I need five. So I've expanded uh, both of them. And uh, I'm going to start using that as the evaluation method. Uh, and with the idea that the more repetition I do with that, the easier it's going to be for everyone here to evaluate their own chameleon cage. And yes, I am next week. I'm going to be releasing a video that explains the uh, the gradients and the branch functions. And so you'll have a um, a reference as to what it all means. And, and we'll continue to do the evaluations and I'll bring up the icons and say, okay, this is what we're going to be doing. And, uh, you know, the wonderful thing about the vlog and having a, like a, a daily vlog is the repetition. You can just see the same thing. You can see the, um, the, uh, the uh, parasite under the microscopes, the fecal analysis. You can see the cage uh, uh, reviews and it just, the more you see it, the more it sinks in and the more second nature it becomes. And so uh, I'm really loving this format. Um, so I, I invite everybody, check out the vlogs. Even if you can't make it there at 5 a.m. in the morning, go back. And uh, every day I'm going to be having, every weekday I'm going to be having a video. Uh, it's so uh, released. So you can you know, you know, check it out every day. Just come back and say, okay, let's see what Bill's up to today. I just wanted confirmation. Fogging all night was not too much. I converted a humidifier into a fogger with excellent results. Okay, Ken, excellent. Okay, uh, yeah, you can you can fog all night, um, and uh, here's the thing with fogging. I haven't figured out how to do it wrong, and I know that sounds strange, but in everything that I do, I don't feel comfortable teaching it or saying you should do this until I understand how it can go wrong either too much or too little. Every single thing that we have, that we, every parameter that we work with, um, there can be too little and there can be too much. And you do not understand that parameter until you understand too little, too much. And let, let's just example, heat. There's just right, 85 degrees, wonderful. Too little heat and your chameleon is lethargic, is not going to be able to uh, digest, and of course will get sick. Too much heat and the chameleon will burn. So we understand the parameters of heat now. Where is that dividing line? Well, that may be a little bit more difficult to determine, but we know how to identify the extremes. Uh, food. How much do we feed a chameleon? Too little? Well, we know the signs of a chameleon that's too skinny. Too much? We know the signs of a chameleon that's obese. All right. So we understand the parameters. Fogging is a little bit more difficult because I don't fully grasp enough that I can explain it in a podcast. Uh, I mean, too little's no problem. Okay, we got a dehydrated chameleon, but too much. Where is too much? I don't know where too much, where that, that line is. And there's got to be a line in some way, shape, or form, because that's the way the entire world works. There's always a line. I mean, even water. Water, we need it for life. Without it, we die. But people can drink so much water that they die <laughs> and that's just that's just the way nature works so let's see bill if the humidity is up to 99 
Should you keep it on all night? I have a timer on and off. Okay, probably you're talking about a fogger. Uh, well, the thing is, if you if you don't need, I mean, if your humidity is at 99%, you don't need more fog. And so the fogger is just there to help you get up to a certain humidity. So we do need to add fog in with some intelligent, reasoning uh but i i am working on how to bracket fogging too much too little so where do you recommend me to buy a panther chameleon well one it depends on where you live you want to tell me where you are geographically uh, i would say just high level captive bred all the way go find a breeder especially a reputable breeder and go with that breeder don't go, get a wild caught and uh, and i recommend not getting an egg um, go ahead that your, your best chance of success is going with a reputable breeder now what's a reputable breeder well uh, I've worked a lot with uh, Frams Cams. I've worked with iPerdolis, Jonathan Hill. Jonathan Hill has a show that uh, as part of this network, and so you and he's been on my show so many times. You can really get to know him. And uh, I do a lot with Frams Cams. They've been on the show as well. And uh, hey, you actually use uh, coupon code Academy at Frams Cams to get twenty five dollars off. Uh, so. Those are the ones I work with, but there's a lot of good breeders out there. Uh, the way you're going to decide which one you like is that uh, you, first of all, figure out what you what you want. If you want a yellow body blue bar, you go to Jonathan Hill, Iperdalis. If you want uh, more of the blues or the ambulobe, other kind of ambulobes, the ambanjas, uh, Frams Camps. And there's a lot of others that will... will uh, you 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 can work with as well. I say those two because I've worked with them. I have their chameleons, and so I have personal uh, experience. Um, and so, uh, but what I would say is uh, call up the people, call them up, and say and just talk with them, and have them help you pick out a panther chameleon. And this is not because you need help picking out a panther chameleon. I mean, you can just go to the website, but talk to them. They're going to be the ones that are going to handhold you through this entire thing. And so it's good that you make sure that they, if you like writing email, write them an email. If you like talking on the phone, call them. And uh, this is just so you can see how they interact and make sure that they interact uh, the way you like to. So that's my high level there. Vlog comes on at a.m. here in the East Coast. Don't move to the East Coast. I am too old to get up at 5 a.m. Well, if I move to the East Coast, I, I would uh, I would do it at 8. I, I really chose 5 a.m. because it was a good, it, it was able to get it out before the, um, before the uh, commute on the East Coast. Uh, that was my strategy. Let's see. In Spain, we can only get Calotratus. Lucky for me. Oh, okay. I love Calotratus. But yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Got news. I got accepted for local locale shed test through John Pinella. Oh, okay, excellent. Excellent. I just had to walk around to feed everyone. Usually got that done before your show, but I'm working out of town. Well, you know what, James? Uh, feeding chameleons is something that is absolutely appropriate for this show. Just got home and I fully enjoy the live. Listening isn't the same. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Love the visuals. Uh, Marsh, yeah, Marsha Ann uh, has worked with iPardalis. Uh, I've got, oh yeah, I've, I love my uh, Antilles. If you go on my Instagram, you see Antilles. Antilles came from, uh, that's my yellow body blue bar, came from iPardalis. Let's 
Let's see. I asked too much uh, about fogging because when I had two foggers running, when I checked in the middle of the night and it was a rainy night, my room was 100% fogged out and I couldn't breathe. Uh, yes, that is going to be the problem. The problem with fogging is going to be that it's just going to put too much water into the air and lungs aren't designed to drink. Uh, they can absorb moisture, but not drink. And so um, the thing is, I don't know how to describe that. At what point is it too much? And unfortunately, our relative humidity gauges go up to 100% and they stop. So it's it's kind of hard. And it's got to be a temperature. The, the warmer it is, the more water the air can hold. So uh, there, there's a lot that's going into this. Uh, let's see. Oh, Juan, you're in Washington State. Excellent. Okay. So, yeah. If you're in the if you're in the United States and you have access to a lot of very good breeders. Yeah. Let's see. Lalo Lucho 310. Hey Bill, now that my big boy is about 9 months, how many insects should I be feeding him to prevent obesity? Well, the question is, is he full grown at nine months? There is, uh, that that's still young adult. I mean, you, you could, a veiled chameleon could definitely be a full adult by nine months. But if you're, the question is, it, if they still have room to grow, then I'd say still feed them, feed them five uh, every day. When you notice that they're not growing lengthwise anymore, then go to three to five every other day. And so that's what I would do. Bill, we lost our female two Wednesdays ago. We have discussed it before. She Okay, I, I, I remember this. Uh, she had egg yolk peritonitis. She also had evidence of bacterial infection and oviducts, mineralization of tissues, Granulo. Okay, so she got a lot going on there. Uh, but but uh, Troy, as I re re remember, this one was pretty old. Uh, and yeah, when things get on in life, things happen. So uh, I don't, I, I don't know. Now the egg yolk peritonitis. Peritonitis. That's the inflammation of. Okay, I don't fully know what that is. Uh, but anyway, okay, well, thank you for the imp information. Um, mineralization of tissues, interesting. Uh, I'd be wondering what was the supplementation. That, that could be interesting. Uh, let's see. For instance, he's continuing to shed. Does that mean he's still growing? Yes, Lalo Lucho, if he's shedding, he's growing. Uh, but the thing is, shedding... He could grow, uh, he could shed if he's growing lengthwise or if he's growing girthwise. So that's, you got to be careful using that as a, a guide as to whether, um, which way he's growing. Try to make sure my humidity doesn't go over 95%. So I actually know how much fog I'm administering. Sometimes I will open up the doors when it's more humid and allow more fog to escape. Notice too much stagnant humidity, saturated environment, more likely to say mold fungi. Yeah, you see, this is, yeah, thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. This is the problem with fogging. It is a function, how much fog there is, is a function of how much fog you're putting in, as well as how much fog gets out. And if you have a whole lot of fog, but it's constantly moving through the cage, that's not as bad as a whole lot of fog in a cage that has no ventilation. And so the fog just stays and stagnates. And so there's a lot of um, complications in explaining it fully. And so this is something I'm, I'm still working on and uh, we're, we're still working on. And the more I talk with people, the better idea I get. So please keep sharing your experiences Keep asking your questions because every time you ask your question, I have to work out what I'm thinking. And so uh, this is all part of it. Uh, please continue to ask your questions and let's let's keep working as a community. 
trying to figure this out because a fogging has been uh, shown it to be a powerful tool in hydration. And uh, we, we need to figure out all aspects of it. So uh, let's see. I've yet to experience too much hydration. Me, me as well. Though I've heard from another, this is possible. I found, haven't found that to be true yet. Yeah, um, Peter Natchez talks a lot about overhydration. And he was on my show, my live, and we talked about it. And uh, he's very confident on it. I don't fully understand that. I don't. So I am, uh, I present what he says just as the, as just as what he says. Uh, I'm not saying that I understand it. I don't understand it well enough to explain it. I don't know where the danger is. I'm worried so much about dehydration and people dehydrating. I'm I'm not uh, overhydration hasn't been a problem that I've had to uh, encounter too often. Bill, is it a good idea during the day to fog a limit limitless or just leave it at night? Uh, Matthew, usually we leave it at night. Um, when I try to fog during the day, number one, it freaks out my chameleon. He doesn't like fog. Uh, he doesn't like to see it billowing at him. And of course, it's because it's unnatural. It's just like this column of fog coming out. And so we have a lot of, we have a, a far ways to go as far as figuring out fogging for our chameleons. Uh, but uh, I don't do it during the day unless... I have a real problem with humidity. Uh, otherwise, I just do it at night, and they just they sleep. It envelops them, and they wake up in a foggy mist, and that seems to be okay. And then it turns off, and they go on their day, and that works really well. What about spraying, uh, Matthew? I I do spray a, a before and after I fog just to just to wet the areas. Uh, but I don't necessarily, ideally, I don't spray as a hydration method. I really like the fogging because it keeps them hydrated. They don't dehydrate. They don't get to the point where they want to drink because we're keeping them at a, 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 a good hydration level at all times. And so uh, I, I like removing that getting thirsty aspect. Um and I and I don't. I mean, I I can't sit and justify it officially, but I like the I I think that's the ideal state for a chameleon, because it's not like they have access to water on demand. Hey, Roxanne is here. Let's see. Okay. All right. We have a lot of discussions. A lot of discussions going on in the chat. So uh, <laughs> it's kind of fun. I just kind of watch it go on, and uh, there's a lot of good stuff going on. Jarek, thank you very much. I appreciate. Yeah, everybody, when you get a chance, hit the like on here. Just let YouTube know this. This is a fun place to be, and that they should, they should give me more reach. So, uh, okay, we got a lot of talk about a lot of people talking about fans. Excellent. Um, I know someone who claims that he started fogging and twelve chameleons died. They did a necropsy on each, and their lungs were full of water. Have to ask him again once I see him. Uh so this is this is what we do with things like that. We have to figure out what actually happened. Uh, I know what happens is someone says, A, and of course, this is the first I've heard about this, so I don't know the situation. But what happens in the chameleon community is someone says, I fogged my chameleons and 12 of my chameleons died and did a necropsy and the lungs were full of water. Now, that seems strange because once a chameleon dies, do they, 
I mean, lungs filled with water? The, the, how do you get your lungs filled with water? What does that mean? We need to, number one, know what that means. Because it's not like there's going to be water in the lungs that is is dripping out. And fogging is not going to fill the lungs with liquid water. Uh, so there, first of all, we got to know the details as to what exactly that means when we say the lungs were full of water. Next, um, and, and then we got to think about what are other ways that this could happen? Because we have people here in the States who are fogging babies. We are f having people fogging Parsons chameleons. We're having people fog chameleons of all ages. And we're not having chameleons die. And especially not lungs full of water. And so something something's going on here. Either the reporting is not accurate or something horrible happened here. And uh, what I'd love to know is the details on this. The problem is when someone has a situation like this, they generally say fogging will kill your chameleons because they don't want to look into it and figure out what they did wrong. Uh, if the fogging was part of it, which it's not clear to me that that's uh, right now that that would be part of it, but say if it was part of it, uh, what about the way he fogged killed his chameleons? It, this was a, because we know that you can fog without killing your chameleons. In fact, it can be a great hydration long term. We know that he did something that we are not doing. And the question is, what is that? Because fogging in itself is not going to kill your chameleons. Too much of anything will kill your chameleons. Too much UVB, too much heat, too much everything. And so if this truly was because of fogging, he did something too much. And it would be very valuable for us to know what he did. I would love, I mean, Jenny, seriously, I would like to know what he did to, to be able to kill his chameleons with fogging. How do you do that? We are over here doing a lot of fogging. Jenny, we're, we're doing so much fogging. I know in your, your circles, there are people who say fogging will kill your chameleons. I've heard that. I've not seen it. I've been doing it for years. And I've got other people who are doing it for years. We're not killing chameleons. So fogging does not kill chameleons. But I am sure that some implementation of fogging can. I mean, and so the question is, how is that? And so, Jenny, I would love it if you could somehow get into conversations and find out what happened. And I know that's tricky because when somebody has chameleons die, they don't want to say, I really screwed up and this is the thing that I did. I feel really bad about it. Please don't anybody ever make my mistake. They don't do that. They say fogging's to blame. So Jenny, if you can be clever and try to get the story without someone getting defensive and trying to cover up evidence of what happened, uh, I would like to know because because number one, this is really important. There are so many people out there who say that fogging kills their reptiles. And I don't know how, how that, how it happens. How does it happen? If it, if it was so dangerous, it shouldn't be hard for us to re recreate it. We, we, me, James, Sean, all these other people who are fogging, we should be seeing some chameleons die. I mean, even if even if just two chameleons died, then we could say, okay, what did we do differently? Maybe it's we're just on the edge. But um, this is a real mystery. And I know there's so many people going out there saying that fogging kills your chameleons. And anybody would love to know if somebody has a conversation with somebody who thinks that fogging kills reptiles or chameleons, if we can figure out what they did, what did they see, what did they experience? Uh, because that, that would help us avoid it. Right now, 
I'm fogging all over the place and there's absolutely no problem. And I, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, so what is it that killed these people's chameleons? A am I going to run into that one of these days? I I'd rather not. I'd rather learn from somebody else's experience. So any, yeah, any help, it would be wonderful. I I'd love to hear. Uh, okay. Very experienced keeper. Yeah. Very experienced keeper. Well, then he should, if he's very experienced, then he should know what he did and be able to share that. Um, I would love that. I'd love that. Yeah. Day fogging scares my Camilla. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And then there's a, uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The inflammation, but if there's actual yolk material in the, if there's actual yolk material in the abdominal cavity, that is going to cause an infection that would be a prime suspect for causing death. Uh, so. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, this is interesting. I know you can drown in certain caves where the humidity is so high that you have to wear an oxygen mask not to drown. Interesting. Yep, yep. Okay. And, and that makes sense. If there's so much water in the air that it's going to overwhelm the lungs. Um, so, that, I mean, that works. Uh, we just have to figure out, is that's what's happening? If that's what's happening with our chameleons, how come it's so hard for some of us? We, we never see it. So what conditions are, but that would be, that would be a logical too much. Whenever I talk about everything has a too little and too much, that would be a logical too much. And so we just have to figure out what does it take for us to reach that level of too much? And that would be a such a valuable piece of information. And uh, yes, I am uh, hesitant to be the one to find that where that limit is of too much, but that's kind of what I do here. I'm going to try to find it. See, curiosities, I purchased a wild-caught chameleon, had a fecal test done, and it came back negative for parasites. Is that possible? Yes, that is possible. That's not likely. Uh, that's why we have three fecals. And, uh, and so I would suggest before you say you don't have parasites to make sure you get two more negatives, um, just to be sure. And uh, it is, uh, consider whether the, uh, did the importer uh, medicate the chameleons. Sometimes the importers will uh, just do a shotgun method. They'll just give them some Panicure, maybe Panicure and Flagyl. And so your chameleon may be medicated just proactively. Uh, but uh, I would be, I have encountered that before. Be very suspicious, but it can't happen. It can't happen. Uh, and the reason why I'm being very um, very negative or pessimistic on that is because the consequences of you thinking that there's no parasites and there actually are, because sometimes I'll do a, a fecal test and it will be clean, but then I'll do a fecal test the next time. And there's just worms all over the place. So what the heck's going on? So, uh, yeah, get, get multiple fecals before you feel, uh, too, before you let down your guard. Could it be possible water in lungs was actually from a respiratory infection, poor airflow in an enclosure? Yeah, it's very possible that, I, I don't know what they mean by fluid in the lungs, but if there was fluid in the lungs, very possible it came from something else and not the fogging. Uh, 
just don't see how that possibly you i've been fogging for years and they have zero issues in fact one of the best tools i found for hydrating my parsons yeah me too so would love to learn more love to be able to talk to somebody who actually has had this experience and figure out if it if it flies the thing is we all when something happens like that we're all looking for an answer as to why and too often we stop searching when we find the first convenient answer and we don't look any further uh, especially when it can be blamed on something that everybody around you is saying yes that is bad so uh, it, it's it is difficult to have critical thinking and sometimes it's very uncomfortable i understand that does the heat cause any issues to the wrap you use in your most recent videos to cover the sides uh so general moving call is call c is uh, talking about the um the shrink wrap the window insulation and uh the uh, there is no issues to the wrap if you use like heat excuse me it's not it's i i'm sure i I'm, i've never had a problem with uh with the heat lamp if that's what that that's what you mean i'm sure there's at some point that it's not good but it's meant to be it's, it's meant to shrink with heat and it's meant to be you know, so, but I guess the answer is no. I've not had a problem. No problem. But I guess because now there must be salt in the mist. They are breathing, drinking. Any opinion? Well, I am in. There's uh, Madagascar is a big island, and so uh, in Ranamafana, where a number of these chameleons are, that is so far from the coast that uh, we're not. We're not getting coastal influences, but I mean, it's, it's certainly something to uh, consider. Yeah. Oh, okay. Full of water was a poor translation on my side. It, it's how it's phrasing and nursing. The lung edema okay yeah jenny you're starting to go um i i now recognize what you mean um but is now uh challenging my understanding of the the official um definition so and, and what that actually means I'll, I'll have to actually look into those words and um and study that to truly understand what uh what was said there but um okay thank you thank you perhaps too much fogging is an enclosure there it dries out during the day yeah but that's not that's a problem with the cage not the chameleon um you'd have to have stagnant air as a problem but a Let's 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 uh, all all figure this out. Oh, uh, all right, everybody. It is coming to the end of the hour. It has been a very good conversation, and it's great to be back, uh, Jenny. If you can find out more information, and uh, and let me know. I'd like to know more because I truly want to know how to explain how much is too much. Uh, and once we know how much is too much, we know how to avoid it. And that uh, I would rather be able to learn from some of the past experiences. So uh, anyway, all right, everybody. Thank you very much for coming by. And uh, I will see you uh, tomorrow at 5 a.m. Pacific. We're going to be having the DIY Chameleon guys. And so uh, join me then. And if you don't want to wake up that early, then just take a look at the DIY Chameleon guys uh, later on when you do wake up. So.
thank you very much. And uh, see you next time.